Digital identity. I don't know how many of you thought about what makes you, you. Um, identity is defined as a set of attributes around one entity. And I like to think of identity as things that are, let's say, unchangeable like personality, but also things that are uh, changeable in time like behavior. Digital means that this, we, we bring this online. Um, so what makes you, you online? Um, let, let, let's think about the tools that we use, the social media platforms. We are so connected today. We are more connected than ever. We use Facebook, we use Google, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and so on, Amazon. Facebook knows about us. They know our birthday, they know our phone number, they know our email address, they know the place of birth, they know where we studied, they know who we studied with, they know our family, they know where we go, where we check into, what we like to eat. Um, now through Instagram, they know what makes us happy. Um, and with WhatsApp, they know uh, who we're talking to. Google knows what's on our mind. Google knows what we search for. Um, Google knows the things that we want to have an answer for. Google knows the music that we like to listen and the type of entertainment. Google knows the content of the emails that we send through Gmail. Uh, Google knows where we're going and the GPS and where we start and the final destination through Google Maps. Um, Amazon knows everything. Amazon knows um, what we ask Alexa to find for us. Amazon knows how many times we type on our Kindle and the information that we like to somehow retain. Let's say we underline, highlight. Um, Amazon knows the things that we like to buy. Amazon can predict the things that we will buy six months from now. Um, so all these tools online that we use on a daily basis to improve our lives, to share our life with everybody else. This makes us us. Um, the problem is free is never free. You have to think about all of these tools that we're using, um, accessible, free, or never free. I can own this phone because I bought it, but I do not own the operating system on it. And therefore, I do not own my data. Digital identity is used in many cases against us. It's like um, banks getting your data from all the transactions, uh, the, the amount of times you swipe your cards, the amount of times you uh, make a purchase and so on, and predict um, the likelihood of us qualifying for a loan, for example. But it's not just us. The type of data that all these tools and, and solutions online co connect, collect about us, this goes to the person beyond. So for example, uh, my uh, credit score and my credit profile will impact Catalin because we are in the same age range. Uh, we kind of, we're, we're both freelancers. So we have a, a pattern that fits and this can be used against them. So, while I don't want a loan, for example, maybe Catalin will want a loan in his life, but he will never be able to get it because my data impacts the decisions these protocols and these systems make for him. Um, which is why I always connect digital identity to data and to privacy. Privacy is a right. And I know that talking about privacy um, it's like making a, you know, standing on a, on a stage and doing a stand up, but the problem is the joke's on you, right? Privacy is your right. Transparency is needed for the systems that we use. Transparency is needed for government. Transparency is needed for voting systems. Transparency is needed in all these tools that collect our data so we understand how it is collected and used. But privacy is for us, the individual. You have a right towards privacy. You have the right for nobody to know what is happening in your house. This is the same. I have a right, if I'm using a system, the system would not collect the data and use it against me. 
um, this leads to another kind of um, discussion, which is privacy or anonymity. And while being anonymous means um, my identity is not known, but what I'm doing on a network is visible, privacy means even if my identity is known, what I'm doing on a network is invisible. Digital identity should not matter in specific systems. And we've seen, for example, with Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a system where your digital identity doesn't matter. It still functions, it delivers, without needing you to be identified as who you are. But it's not just about this. All these systems that we use, all these tools, um, all the data that is collected, Right? We think, okay, how can we stop this? So a lot of people use ad blockers, right? You use a uh, browser, you use an ad blocker, and you think, finally, no more ads, no more data collected. But it is not enough because technology advances. The purpose of technology is to reinvent itself every single day. Investors put money into technology. Investors do, no, do not put money into privacy because we don't ask for it. We, the consumer, do not claim our right towards privacy. Unless we say we want tools, devices that are pro-privacy, investors will not invest in pro-privacy technology. And therefore, us, we contribute to the whole, let's say, the whole narrative. And going back to ad blockers, you install ad blockers, um, but nowadays, it's, are you familiar with third party cookies? Okay, so according to GDPR, when you go on a website, uh, there's gonna be a pop-up that says we collect specific information on you. So you can go to advanced or preferences and pick. And you pick. The problem is, it's not just third parties now. It's first parties, and first parties com uh, communicate between Google and Facebook all the time, and there is one ID associated to you as an individual, and this ID communicates with Facebook and Google all the time. Because these systems are built on an ad revenue model, okay? Google was the first to introduce the ad revenue model. Um, there is an amazing person called Shoshana Zuboff. She wrote um, a book on surveillance, and she says, we are raw material. <laughs> it's kind of, um, you know, it's, it's uh, impactful, but this is what we are, because we're feeding all this data and private information to, the, to these systems. And first party tools cannot be blocked by ad blockers. First party tools, can be blocked by advanced privacy tools. So what you can do, if you think, okay, Roxana, what should I do, right? What you can do is duck, duck, go it. Okay, don't Google it. Duck, duck, go it. Duck, duck, go is a, a pro-privacy browser. Use duck, duck, go and figure out, search. Search for privacy messenger and you'll get signal. Privacy mobile operating system, and you'll get the options. Privacy browser, and you'll get, for example, Brave or uh, Firefox. The more you use these per privacy tools, the better it is for everyone. And um, as I said, it's also better for you because all the data that is collected and with the advancement of technology has turned into another mess called browser fingerprinting. That means one pixel can trace you and trace your journey throughout life. And privacy laws are not enough. GDPR will tell you um, why we're using your data, why companies are using your, your data. Uh, laws have a uh, purpose not of prevention, but you know, of applying a punishment in case the company took it too far. Um, but there are back doors, right? There's an escape through it. So 
you have to take it to yourself and look for tools and use them. You have to think about um, the data that you put out there, the historical data, that's gone. That is not yours and you can never claim it. I can't go to Facebook and tell Facebook, hey, you know what I posted 10 years ago? Um, I don't want that on my record anymore because it belongs to the Facebook server. It is the same um, with data from three years ago. But what I can do today is I can stop using Facebook or I can stop putting uh, pictures of my baby on Facebook. I can stop putting personal information. Do I need to share everything with the world? Because in the end, the world doesn't care. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to feed my ego, basically. Oh, I'm going on a vacation. I'm going to post this. I'm going, um, I'm speaking at a TEDx. <laughs> I'm going to post this, OK? I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sort of build a personal brand around me. And that's fine. But our daily lives are not a personal brand. Our daily lives are private. So seven years ago, I was talking to uh, people about building an online brand, about building an online identity, being a freelancer, you know, all this freedom of, of um, business and all this, this financial freedom. And now, seven years later, I'm talking about privacy. And I'm encouraging everyone to be more mindful because we contribute to the world that, um, we're building one step at a time with every single tap. And I think it's up to us to build a better future. And even if the impact that we do is just one single drop, together we're a force to be recognized in the world. And before I end, um, I would like to read, because I'm getting old so my memory doesn't work anymore. Um, I'd like to read a quote from E.E. E. Cummings, which says, to be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make everybody but yourself means to fight the hardest battle which any human being can fight and never stop fighting. So please, Join me today on Signal and privacy tools and never stop fighting. Thank you so much. <laughs>